two disciples walk on a road outside of Jerusalem. And they're talking about the things that had taken place in recent days. Confusing things, sad things, uncertain things. What would life look like? How would they move forward? Could there be life again? Jesus makes a way in the wilderness, makes a path for our feet, and joins us in the journey. May the journey that unfolds before you this day be one that reveals the presence of Christ and his comforting grace around us. I'm Craig Swenson, pastor of Salem Lutheran Church, Peoria, Illinois. Welcome to worship. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are given new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water you gave us water from the rock. If we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for water everywhere. Bathe us in the forgiveness, love, and grace. Satisfy the thirsty and give us life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be given glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in singing the hymn of praise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello there. Our story for this week is called The Road to Emmaus, and it takes place after Jesus has died and two of his disciples are walking seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Now, back then, that's how everybody got around. They walked. And so seven miles would have taken like around two hours or so. And while they're doing this, a stranger comes along and walks with them. And the stranger is really Jesus, but they don't recognize him. This walk to Emmaus seems so long when your heart is heavy. to join us in our walk to Emmaus? Sure. All right. Oh, How long have you been walking? Oh, oh well, a few well. miles by now. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, it's it's a seven mile journey from Jerusalem. It's a long way. We got these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would speed it up some. Hmm. Uh, I was wondering. Yeah. It's getting a bit late out. Would you like to join us for supper? Oh, sure. That's a good idea. Yes. Come sure. and join oh. us. Come. Oh. 
And in fact, he tells them all about himself, all about Jesus, interpreting scriptures, and they still don't realize who it is. As it gets late, they invite him to stay with them and eat, and he does. And finally, when he is breaking the bread, just like he did at the Last Supper, they realize who it is. Jesus, and he disappears. They are so excited, even though it is late, and they run all the way back to Jerusalem, seven miles, to tell their friends, Jesus is alive. Well, let's eat, I'm hungry. Thank you. Can you imagine how excited and joyful they must have been to run back and tell their friends? Wow. We can feel that same kind of joy of Jesus' presence, of Jesus being with us and feel Jesus loving us when we read the Bible. And there are a lot of different Bibles out there. So I would invite you to read yours or have someone in your family read to you. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. And God bless you and keep you safe. You are children of God. Bye-bye. A reading from Acts. Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God, Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel. It is according to the 24th chapter of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only strangers in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. They came near the village to which he, they were going. He walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the, the day is now almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road, while he was opening to us the scriptures? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, The Lord has indeed risen and has appeared to Simon. And they had told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the road by which we walk is sometimes dark and lonely and a bit frightening. Lord, we trust your word, and in your word it is made known that Jesus appears to people who have grieving hearts, people who did not know which direction to turn, people who had lost hope. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us, that you would make yourself known to us in simple and yet profound ways. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those who are ill, or those who are helping to provide support and care for others. We pray, Lord, that as we journey together, as we walk this life, that you would remind us that we do not walk alone, that you walk with us, you care for us, and as a result, our hearts burn within us with your love. We thank you, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was a student at Wartburg Theological Seminary from the years 1991 and graduating in 1995. Wartburg is in Dubuque, Iowa, on the east side of, of Iowa, right along the Mississippi River. It was a good place for, for me to study and to learn and to develop skills and insights to become a pastor, but it was also a good place for our family. Karen was employed at the seminary. She worked at the library there. And our kids attended school in Dubuque. And it was a good place for them. And they have, we have many fond memories. Of the memories that I have at seminary is time shared with classmates trying to understand what it was that these professors were trying to pour into us. Sometimes the subject matter was, was a bit challenging, to say the least. And so we would get together for study sessions, to prepare for exams, or to write papers. And we would gather together in what was called the refectory, just opposite of the chapel. And we would have coffee, and we would give each other support and lend a listening ear. Sometimes we would go for a walk. I have a dear friend of mine who's a colleague and is now serving a, a church in the northern part of, of Illinois. And he and I would enjoy going down Grand Avenue. We'd go for, for walks in a few times a week. Oftentimes, it was because we needed the exercise. We needed to get out and get some fresh air. And sometimes, we just needed each other's company to ponder and to talk about the classes that we were taking, to try to make sense of them, or to talk about our families, to talk about uh, the an anticipation of what was to come before us as we anticipated being called into ordained ministry and where we might serve in the church. But I remember the phone would ring in the evenings and either I would call Ken or Ken would call me and we, we would simply say, would you like to go for a walk? So we would meet up by the seminary and we would take off and we would hike three miles or so and down Grand Avenue to the end and, and bound to the Okie Dokie uh, quick store, quick uh, stop, shop store and, and back. It was a good time together. It developed a deep friendship that lasts to this day. 
But it was a good reminder to us that we do not journey in this life by ourselves. There's always an opportunity for someone to join with us. Sometimes it's physically going for a walk. Sometimes it's a, a note or a phone call or some kind of other kind of messaging system that is a way of getting in touch, letting people know that they're in our hearts and in our prayers and that whatever's going on in their lives, they are not alone. That's a sad feeling, that sense of being abandoned, that sense of being alone. We've had a little bit of that experience, I think, from time to time when we've been in this shelter in place now for a, a number of weeks. And sometimes it can get a little weary for us. And we wonder too what the future might hold for us as we anticipate that this will not last forever. And how might we care for each other and be among each other when the shelter in, order, uh, shelter in place order lifts and we begin to interact and begin to be out and about once again. That is yet to be determined. As these two disciples who had been into Jerusalem and they were traveling to a nearby town called Emmaus or walking along, they were doing much like what Ken and I were doing, have done many times, talking about the things that had recently taken place, things that were on their hearts, things that they were still questioning, things of which they're a bit uncertain. And then on their journey, there came this third person along, though they didn't recognize it was Jesus. And he bends a listening ear into their conversation. And then after a while, he says, what are you two talking about as you're walking along? And they described the things that had taken place in Jerusalem the past many days. He said, oh, what things? To which they were just amazed that they didn't, he wouldn't have known all this uproar that took place in the city. It was a, a major thing that had happened after Jesus had entered into Jerusalem in this triumphal entry. And after then, Jesus was arrested and the mob kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And then taking him through the streets of the city, along with two others, to be crucified outside the city gates on a hill called Golgotha. Do you not know about these things? And then Jesus describes the things that had taken place were part of a plan. And he began to unfold for them the things that had been shared in earlier generations that had prepared for this time. And you could sense that the, the disciples as walking along were intrigued because something was going on inside of them. They were not feeling the same kind of loneliness, the same kind of anxiety, the same kind of sadness and grief that they had experienced before. No, they were, they were sensing something different, but they weren't exactly sure what. But they were in, compelled to learn more. So they get to the fork in the road to which Emmaus was to go into town and this stranger seemingly was going to go all on the way. And the two urged him saying, stay with us because after all, it's almost nightfall. The day is almost over and come and gather in our house. And so Jesus did and he, he met them in their home. And it was while they were at the table that the two disciples really started putting pieces together. And as Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them, their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. 
They said, weren't our hearts burning within us as he was talking with us on the road, as he was opening to us the Holy Scriptures? Didn't we sense something was going on that was stirring, that was uniquely different than what we had experienced before where all of our hopes and dreams were being washed away? Didn't we sense a renewal of that hope when we saw what he did before our eyes? Brothers and sisters in Christ, this has been a challenging time for us as we have not been able to gather for weeks now and to come together to worship in the same place and to be together as we remember and we give thanks and we receive the risen Jesus in Holy Communion. The meal that renews faith, that forgives sins, is that continued reminder of that Jesus experience that the disciples had when they were together. But I can assure you we will gather together again. We will feast once again. And this time that we've had to postpone that and, and not have that together regularly is creating a longing in my soul. And I pray that it might stir in you as well. May that longing and that urging and yearning for the presence of Jesus be soothed and be stilled by the message of God's love and grace through the Holy Word. And may it give you assurance that as we journey through this life, and as we recognize and realize we do not go it alone, that this renews faith within us, renews our hope, and reestablishes for us the assurance that we will one day gather together in this place and in places like this throughout the church. And we will receive this precious meal as Jesus promises. May the peace and love of Jesus sustain you until that day. And may your journeys be filled with hope and with faith as we anticipate what God continues to do and how Jesus shows up and is partnered with us in our lives. Amen. Day of the rising, Christ on the roadway, unknown companion walks with his own. When they invite him, as fades the first day, and bread is broken, Christ is made known. When we are walking, doubtful and dreading, blinded by sadness, slowness of heart, yet Christ walks with us, ever awaiting, our invitations they do not part. Christ our companion, hope for the journey, bread of compassion, open our eyes, grant us your vision, set all hearts burning, that all creation with you may rise. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Trustworthy God, thank you for your life-giving and enduring word. May we continue to find creative ways to share the good news and fellowship of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful Lord, we give you thanks for the earth you have created and the food it provides to sustain your people. Guide us so that all may share in your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing God, you call all people to yourself. Unite us as a people around the country and world in mutual love and concern that we might recognize you in the faces of those with whom we disagree. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you yourself come near and walk with us during these uncertain times. Grant your peace and healing to all who despair and suffer in body or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God who hears, we pray your comfort for people grieving canceled milestones, celebrations, and goodbyes. Help us support and encourage one another through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the many and varied and generous gifts that continue to support this congregation and the ministries that it supports in this community and around the world, thank you. We pause now to give thanks 
and to remember the abundant blessings that God provides for us and the way that God equips us and calls us to share with others. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Renew our faith and life with your grace and stir us in ways that are generous and fruitful and bring you honor and glory in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Just a closer walk 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Share the good news. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.